into general credits are all quite successful entrepreneurs, to be honest. Yep. You know, they, they learned how to do things regardless of the system. Yeah. Right? So there's, 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 something, there's something about in grade 9 that really irks me labeling a student yep. at 14 years old that they're not going to go to university just because they skip. Yeah. Or whatever the reason may be. And it's uh, it's annoying. I know, and it's and it's one of those things that that, that, that there's a game that has to be played. Uh, the better students learn how to play the game, they know they're going to get out of it. They but they can they can they have that sense of control that they that discipline that say, okay, I can play this game. That's not who I am, but I know how to play it. I, I in my in my classes, I taught grade seven and eight for a long time, and uh, difficult classes to teach. You know, thirteen, fourteen year olds. I used to math tell, oh, challenging. Any, any, anyway, I used to tell the students that that if they didn't want me to surprise them and ask them a question about homework or about anything that maybe they didn't know the answer to, so as long as they were looking at me, I wouldn't ask them a question. So just They're trying to stare judge at you. me, right? Stare at me, and I won't ask you a question. As, but but if you talk to somebody beside you, or if you don't pay attention to me, I'm going to ask you a question. So I said, I don't care if you're thinking about what you did last night or what you're going to do tomorrow, as long as you're looking at me. <laughs> I said, don't pay attention to me, and I'm going to ask you immediately. So yeah, some of them got a little, you know, they, they understood this, and, and I said, why? I said, and, and I'd explain to them afterwards, usually the year after. No, I wouldn't explain to them that year. That you can't help but pay attention to what you're looking at. You can try as much as you want, but if you're going to focus on something, you're going to look at something, you're going to catch what's coming. Something. If you're not looking at it, you're going to be focused someplace else. And so I That's knew smart. that as long as they kept quiet, they were going to listen. They were going to catch more than if I just didn't ask them the question. And the better students were paying attention anyway. Right. So I, I'd say, unless you put up your hand, won't ask you a question if you're looking at it. And, and so if you get into this whole game playing, role playing, and, and, and um, trickery. It, it is. And, yeah. and I, I, used to, I used to, I mean, some of the most rewarding moments of, of my teaching career was, was when I would take a grade 7 student or a grade 8 student and, I, and I'd sit down with them and I'd say, you know, you're in what we call special ed, you're, you're in resource. And you're in my class for half the day, and you're in resource for the rest of the day. I said, if, if I talk to your parents, and they agree, would you mind staying in my class all day without resource help? Uh, it was unbelievable. They, they just, you, you, you thought that you just created a whole new person when you could take that label off them. And they didn't have to be the one in the class that only came back to class for the easy subjects. Right. Now they struggled. They knew they were going to struggle. And, yeah. and, and they knew that, that they were going to have to work hard. But for them to stay with the group all day gave them a whole new identity. And they were so happy that they didn't have to go to special ed. And, and, yeah. and that... Even, even the label special ed. Yeah. Right? You know, I, like it's, there's it's, a lot of derogatory terms that came, I, that yeah. came with that. And, and yeah. You know, special. Yeah. When when somebody says he or she is special, yeah. um, you know, it puts it, it definitely puts pressure oh, yeah. not o not only on the person but their their peers, the parents. Yeah. Uh, parents start feeling shame or bad about what they did, and uh, you know, parents uh, are are obviously they went through the same system. Most of them are not trained to to be able to ask philosophical questions and. You know, it's just a method. It's just a way of doing things. And the problem is that people are scared to face um, their prejudices. Well, yeah, they're, yeah. they're scared. They're scared to face. Yeah. Like with teachers, I sat down with a whole room of teachers, and the principal at the school wanted me to go in and have a chat with the teachers on my methods of educating. It must be scary at the beginning. <laughs> it was. It, it, it was because the teachers didn't want to be there. Who the hell is this guy coming in here? It's you know. Yeah. And, and my first question is was to them was a very simple one. What do you do? 
right? So if someone asks you at a cocktail party, what is it that you do? Mm-hmm. And, and if you say, I'm a teacher, you know, that's, that's an easy way out. But what is it that you do? Like you, for you, the, the, the story you just gave me is, I change lives, I shape lives. Yeah. And a teacher, like you said at the start of the segment, is a parent or a coach or you know we all have teach we're all teachers yeah. right in one way or another but to say I'm a teacher is pretty pretty uh, silly yeah, right yeah. like it's, it's just silly like what, anybody at the table could say I'm yeah a teacher. What, what what is it what is it that you do like in a day yeah, what do you do right what do you do are you yeah. you know are, and sadly uh, you know a lot of them have, after the the discussion we had about a half hour, forty five minute discussion, came up to me and said, "You know what, Ryan? I didn't ever think about what I did, no. right? So, so what I did was I did what I was trained to do, yeah. and I became, you know, a, I'll say it, a minion, right? And I'm just part of the machine, and I'm just going through the, the yeah. motions, discipline, uh, making sure that you create that that." that higher grade average than you did last year, all of those things that come from the administration, yeah. rather than, you're here for the students. Yeah. Not only that, you work for the students. Yeah. So the system is, the students have no input, just like with most yeah. organizations, the people who are you know, in, in the trenches can't come out and say, you know what? Yeah, maybe teaching philosophy will allow the students to see us in a different light, yeah. to see the system in a different light, to see themselves in a different light. Yeah. And until you get to university, and, and only if you choose a class in philosophy will you be exposed to that type of thinking, sadly, yeah. very sadly. And it's, you're right, and we all need it. And, and it's so, it, it's, it's unfortunate because with all of the, the different stresses in life and all of the different things that are happening. I, I've often told people, I said, I, I've sat back sometimes and looked at my 25 or 26 kids in class, and sometimes I, I'll wonder, I wish I could just get inside each one of their heads and find out what's going on in their life now. And then I got to the point of saying, I would not want to go. Right. I couldn't take it. If I knew exactly what was what they were pain. thinking of right pain. now, the pain that they're going through, the pressures at home, the different, it, I would, there, there's a, there's a, a video, uh, and I'm sure you've seen a, it's, it's called, a, a, I think it was a, a kid in school called a, Terry Stoddard or something like that. Uh, it, the, the, the video is about the day <laughs> I stopped teaching. Uh, and so as a teacher, yeah, okay, and, and, you know, and, and 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 it basically was this this kid that was going through all kinds of problems in life, and and the teacher for for the first time realized that it was a person, it wasn't just a person in class, it wasn't a number, yeah, a, and, unit, and a unit or a yeah. widget. And you're talking about these students who are saying they want to talk philosophy, and they can be the top students, they can be the bottom students, they're people. And and you can be employees who are your managers, your your frontline workers. Uh, they all have they all have this basic desire to have a purposeful life. Yep. And they have to use the talents that they've been given and the strengths they've been given. And we all have gifts. And, and I think that the whole the, the difficulty with teaching is that we don't understand, and the system is not geared. To allowing people to develop their gifts, we try to develop their weaknesses. If you and, if you can't memorize, Bob, yeah, you, yeah, you're not you're not in the right system. Yeah, the way it is now, the way it's set up now. Yeah, All right. so someone like me who is not trained to memorize, yeah. has uh, you know, has, has forever fought against the system. If I was back in the system, the same thing would repeat itself. Yeah, because the system is no different today than it was. Uh, in '88 to '92, no, when I, I was at Llewellyn, it's the same hasn't changed exact the system. Yeah. And um, you know, for 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 us, we know we're doing the right thing because our we don't ask the administration, and we don't have parent-teacher interviews. We ask the students. 
what they want to study. So in Toronto, I have a group of guys in the East End that I've been with for two and a half years now. They were my first group. And they choose the topics every week. And not only do they say things like, hey, Ryan, next week, can we study productivity? They don't say that. They say, can we study the philosophy of productivity, which is different than studying productivity because to study productivity means define it, memorize it, yeah. and then you'll know what it is. And then evaluate what you've achieved. We, if you have an hour conversation about productivity, I work 80 to 100 hours a week. Before that conversation that we had, I felt like a pretty productive guy. I get a lot of work done, I get a lot of meetings in, I teach a lot, I, I just do a lot. But at the end of that conversation, I realized I'm not productive. Reason being is, productivity has a lot to do with the balance of your spiritual life. Whether your happiness, mm -hmm. your calmness, yeah. You know, I'm anxiety ridden and that's why I work so much is because I can't stop. It's an addiction, yeah. right? So, so that conversation, me being a colleague of theirs and a student in the conversation, student of life. a student of life, and we realized, hey, none of us are productive, all for different reasons. But if we want, you know, and we all want to be more productive, but we can't, we can't, uh, we can't do it in a, in a, in a way that it's an illusion. Right, which is really what I was doing. If I if I do X, then I don't have to feel like I'm not productive anymore. Yeah. Right? If you if you can sit at the end of the day and say this was a good day, then you've been productive. Yeah, and now I'm asking myself this question at the end of the day. Did you do your best and did you do the right thing when you could? Yeah. Right? And that, that, that helps me get over like the hours because I was just like, Okay, you sent out five proposals, you sent out fifteen emails. You met with Bob, you, you, you did the, the classes, productive. Yeah. Th those questions are gone and now I'm asking different questions. And did you make a difference? Did you make a difference? Absolutely. In one person's life, then it's been a fulfilling day. And I think the productivity, fulfillment, making a difference, all those things when you get into the, the, the workplace, they are what is dragging down productivity as we define it. As we because, define it. Because we've got this. And we define it with ways. widgets and units and, yeah. and, 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 you know, your hourly wage. And, um, you know, what we talked about in class today, actually, we were talking a bit about it. And we can transfer that now that we've defined it differently yeah. in, in a way that makes more sense to everybody. Are we using our technologies productively? Mm -hmm. Meaning Facebook. Yeah. Am I on Facebook to, uh, to creep? Am I on Facebook to, uh, to meddle say, in the drama? To, to say whether you're going to Or, or to look at everybody else's crappy life so I can look at mine and yeah. say, at least mine's not that bad. Yeah. Right? We could pick out all the negatives on Facebook. So at the end, it's like, uh, okay, was that really productive the last two hours I spent on there? Or can I use this technology yeah. differently to make a difference in somebody's yeah. life? When somebody's yeah. calling out yeah. for yeah. help, could you make a few good comments that would make someone feel good? And how hard is that, Bob? Yeah, that's right? Just, that's it. Like, that's it. And all you it know? takes is a and, like. And, and it might not even be a comment. Yeah, it's just it a like. Just be a like. Just which, somebody which, paid attention to what I put up there. Which means something, right? And, and again, it's something that small, like a like button on Facebook. Yeah. If, if we study it philosophically, we can understand the power of it. Yeah. That's but, like when you were going through... Uh, uh, when, well, when you're a CPGA pro, for uh, for you to take two minutes to stop as you're walking by a, a junior golfer and just say, hey, you know, try holding like this and then continue. It's like Change pressing the, the like button, button. Yeah. right? That's, yeah. that's really what it is. It, cha it could change their day, yeah. right? It, yeah. it could be the same as on Facebook, the, the kid puts his grip on, on a, as a pick on Facebook, yeah. and if you like it, as a CPGA pro, yeah. they're going to look at that and go, hey, the pro likes my grip. Yeah. My dad told me it was wonky. My friends tell me it's wonky. But this guy liked it. I like it. Yeah. I'm going to feel more confident. Confirmation. The kid goes out and shoots the best round of his life. Just be and we, we know that that's yeah. the, the most philosophical part about golf yeah. is your mind. Yeah. Thinking where they want the ball to go. 
Yeah, you see it before. Extroverts. Right? Like, uh, I remember asking Tom Bertuzzi when he was a, a young professional hockey player about visualization. We went to high school together. We were the same age. And Todd said that he'd close his eyes the night before a game, see the television on his forehead, and watch Hockey Night in Canada. Not only watch the game, but hear the announcers, hear the crowd, the TV, everything yeah. that surrounded it, and that just pumped him up for every game, right? Every game was Hockey Night in Canada in his yeah. mind. Yeah. And you know, it's, 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 the mind is a powerful thing, but oh, yeah. the, the, the brain is not the mind. I'm sure you've we got, think it's We think it is. I'm sure you've been on the tee box and, and had a, a person you're playing golf with for a, 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 some refreshment after the game, and they just say, oh, watch that pond. Yeah. That's all you need. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Watch that point. Well, I might just throw the ball in the water right now. Yeah. And, and you know what? It should be allowed because that's the type of challenges that I think are necessary in life. Yeah. You know, like, like today, um, this, this young woman who, uh, you know, I'm a reader who's not classically trained. I started to read and, and, and I found it really difficult to listen to that voice in my head. So what she said was... She's reading a poem and she's going through it and it's robotic, da, 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 da. So it's like, that's why people don't like to read, right? Who does if it's like that? And she's put, she looked at me and said, I'm a bad reader. And I looked at her and said, don't you ever say that again about yeah. yourself. First, you have to apologize to yourself for saying that. And the reason that you don't like to read is because you never learn to read. Reading is not just expressing the words on a page. Reading is doing what you and I are doing right now, yeah. right? Reading someone, reading the, we're in a studio. Yeah. We're not at Timmy's having a coffee sitting across from each other. Yeah. So reading the situation, yeah. and she's wise. She can read, yeah. right? But she has told herself she's a bad reader. What are the odds of her becoming educated through text? Yeah. Slim to none. Right? She's just going to figure out the system, go to college, like yeah. you said, yeah. you know, get the piece of paper, go yeah. on, and she won't be, because of that, well, hopefully today she, she changes her tune, but because of that, she'll never progress in her, uh, in her profession, because progression in profession means you have to study to get there, yeah. right? Whether you're a, a PSW that becomes a nurse, if she's a PSW, she's probably not going to become a nurse because that's further education. Yeah. So it's really like, you know, what is a reader? Well, that's a, we're all readers. Yeah. And, I mean, I'm tall. Depends on who's beside me. Yeah, absolutely. Depends what my comparator is. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good looking. I'm tall. I'm, <laughs> Depends who's beside yeah, me. I, I always tell people, <laughs> if I was any taller, my hat wouldn't fit. <laughs> so, so when you're looking at this whole philosophy of life, where are we going now with the Canadian Youth Golf Alliance? Because it's obvious that what you're using, you're using golf as the focal point, but it's not, it's not the end. I mean, you're, you're using golf to get to people. Yeah, our, 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 I'm using golf because of the attachment it has to me as well. Right. Yeah, right? Got, I, uh, I know what it did for me. That's right. And I know what it did for the, the groups of people that, right. whether you're at the Idlewild or at yeah. Timberwolf or at Lively, yeah. it's a social thing, it's a cultural thing. Yeah, you, that can, you can relate to it. And it was, was very, very seldom is it a bad thing, right? You get the odd uh, addict who won't go home to... You don't find too many people that are not happy to be in a golf course. Yeah, that's exactly correct. Maybe, you know, it, it's... it's uh, Even after it's, a bad game. Yeah, so, so our... our, our our slogan underneath our logo is educate, employ, engage. Right. So, so our first, uh, you know, our first mission is to help youth eliminate risks through education, not formal education. Uh, we have our own curriculum that we're developing, yeah. and whether it's stamped by the ministry or not makes no difference to us. Almost, we, it's almost uh, comic, not comic, but it's ironic that one of the risks is education. Yes, yes, it, it is absolutely, and and the way we educate ourselves, mm -hmm. right? It's almost when your parents tell you when you're young, just because, 
and you learn that, that you're not to question, yeah. that's what education until they take our course means to them. They don't question the history text, right? Even the philosophy in one of the schools that we're in right now, they, at all 10 schools when we started to develop the partnership, none of them taught philosophy, zero. So it was quite easy for us to make the argument that we were adding value. Mm -hmm. Now two of them have put it on their books. Uh, not sure if it's because of us, don't really care. Uh, actually happy that they're teaching philosophy, but they're not really teaching philosophy so much as they're teaching the history of philosophy. When Plato was born, the Greek, uh, the Greek system of politics, all of that kind of... Uh, and, it, and you know, sadly, every single one of the students in every single one of those classes is learning philosophy. Oh, they have to be. They're learning philosophy. Yeah. They're not being taught it, but they're learning it. Well, they, yeah, and they might be learning, uh, they might be learning how to fight against it as yeah. well. Yeah. Don't deal with it, run away. That's right. They're right? learning, they're learning you, the wrong thing. Because it, when, philosophy hurts, right? Because you're asking hard questions. Oh, you, could, you, could be, yeah. you could be asking hard questions about yeah. the people that you love the most. Yeah. And they're hurting you, and now you realize that it's probably perpetual, and the reason that they're hurting you is because they're in serious pain yeah. as well. Yeah. The easiest answer is because I said so. Yeah, just because, right? Like, just because. Yeah, stop asking questions. You know, and, and, and you know, we, we don't talk about lying. Like, what do we do in society the most that we all have in common? We're all liars. And are there any answers? Are well, the philosophy, just, just of, the philosophy of lying is a great discussion in every class because students love realizing that the teachers are lying, right? And they might not be doing it on purpose, but if you're saying something that's untrue, that's a lie, yeah. right? And if you don't do your due diligence as an educator and find out, hey, this, this doesn't seem right, seems funny, and you still teach it, that becomes offensive, yeah. right? And, and history textbooks are the perfect example, right? We're having some, some push now towards teaching uh, residential schools in our curriculum but even they're finding that they're not teaching it. And if they are, they're brushing over it really quickly because they have to. Yeah. It's forced upon them. Yeah. So, you know, the question of, of, of the atrocity of it is, 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 yeah. is pretty plain. But, the, you know, the, the reality is, is that, you know, we have to understand why our government did it as well, right? The philosophical question about why those things happen is not always mean. It doesn't, you know? doesn't mean that they're it has doing to happen again. The no, that today that's right. Are wrong. Just let's you know? find out why we did it. Yeah. Why did it happen? That's let's right. You know, like if we, if we, if we, if we for, we always think that Canadians are nice, right? That's just what we think because we're Canadians and we like that about ourselves. Yeah. But uh, coming, moving from Sudbury to Toronto, I realized that uh, maybe I wasn't so nice to other races. Right? And, and for me, it was an ignorant sort of racism. I wasn't trying to be racist, uh, but I was being racist because that's the language that I learned yeah. growing up where I grew up. And then I learned actually what racism was by asking those hard questions. Am I racist? Yeah. And so you, you, you learned all this. You, didn't, you weren't taught. Right. But you I had to ask the hard questions. You learned it from modeling. You learned it from the actions of other people. Well, you know, when you grow up with, uh, you know, and you're in the hockey uh, room with, with 15 white guys, and, uh, you know, if, if, if issues come up, even about women, you know, I, I, the way that I, I looked at and treated women was shaped by my, myself as a teenager, not asking myself, is, is this the right way to treat women? And then the more important question, because the answer was very clear, no. And the next question would be, what is the right way to treat women as a man? And I didn't learn that until I was in my 30s. Because you're not allowed to ask those questions, no. especially in school. No. Right? That's not, a, that's not an academic topic. That's, Jeez, that's, that's, that's not cool. That's, yeah, it's right. not cool. That's, yeah, not cool that you couldn't ask your friends because they're going to give you the lies. Yeah. Right? That's what we're trained to do is 
Yeah. You know, this is the way that we treat women. This is the way it's traditional. And and you know what, Bob? It's not gone anywhere. No. The chauvinism in, in the groups of males that I work with is still very, well, very clear. Absolutely. Yeah. What's um, so? What's the future for the Canadian Youth Health Alliance? Obviously, you're going to grow. Yeah, we're in a, development. Right now, stage. right now we we've expanded to, um, to to groups in, in the GTA in Toronto in Newmarket. We're working with three or four groups, and in Sudbury we're working with four groups. So our plan is the next two years to expand within those regions, to not create new regions. So there's more high schools in Sudbury that we we can go work with. And then same thing in Newmarket, there's four or five more schools we can work with. In the GTA, there's obviously, you know, hundreds of schools. And then what we want to do after we've expanded a little bit within those regions is to start expand across the, the, the whole country. So, so this is really, uh, like, it's critical to have the right people in front of the group. So your expansion really depends on the people that you put in the classroom. Yeah. You can't be there all the time. No. So how are how do you anticipate the growth? Uh, kind of like each. I'm looking. I'm looking for. So I'm looking for. I, I found someone uh, here, uh, but it's going to be a process to see if the youth trust them. Okay. Right. So so this person is a philosopher, and has suffered from some serious risks in their lives, and is open about talking about them. Uh, the the person can't come from within the system. That's the first thing. This, this, the students, even when there's a teacher in the room, uh, are a lot different than when that teacher exits the room. And thankfully, most of the teachers get that when the students are holding back and, it, you know, I should leave so that whatever student it is can open up and, and you know. Yeah, you have to have a lot of confidence as a teacher to leave the room when someone else is in there too because... Absolutely. You have to have somebody has to be that is certified has to be. Yeah. Ab absolutely. So so that's the trust that has to happen yeah. not not only amongst the students, but amongst the staff that. So yeah. so it, it's it's a process. It took me over a year to get there. Oh, I can but imagine. but now I'm there with all my schools, and mainly it's not it's 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 not the teacher, it's the students yeah. that have uh, told the teacher without telling them with words. We want. To be alone with Ryan and the reason is is because we can't say the same things and we don't want to it's, it's not a lecture and when the teachers there it becomes a lecture for me because I study I take my job very seriously in all aspects so when I go to a class um, you want to be able to come back well I, yeah and I, I, I want to be able to come back but I also want the students to, to, to know that I've done my homework yeah right, to study and, and whether we're talking about productivity, you know, I studied because it was a group of Muslim guys that I was working with, I studied stuff from the Quran and what the Prophet Muhammad had to say about productivity, right? So then they go, oh, hey, how is this guy know more than us about what's coming out of the Quran on productivity, mm -hmm. right? Because the way they're trained to interpret the Quran, or sorry, wrong word, to study the Quran, is through memorization, okay. to memorize prayers and to and to repeat those prayers, but the interpretation is kind of like a little bit of the old school Catholic system where, you know, you, you go into the church and the, the Bible's not in the pew for a reason. It's not up to you as the parishioner to to interpret, right? It's up to so so we sing psalms or whatever we do in church, and and when we go home. That stays there, right? At least in my family, when till I was 16, and was able to make up my own decision about whether that was something I wanted to continue doing. Yeah. And like most 16-year-old boys, <laughs> I exited the church as quickly as I possibly could, mainly because it's 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 not a philosophical place. But it had a, a profound effect on who you are today. Absolutely, because I, you were able to experience that. Had absolutely. you not experienced that, you may not be where you are today. Yeah, no, I, 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 I probably wouldn't be where I am because it gave me my it gave me my first battle of with authority yeah. against that authority and then the person it gave me my empathetic person I am today. Yeah. 
I realize why the church exists. The, the questions I ask about the church are now not so much, uh, you know, as an academic trying to criticize it, yeah. more as a person trying to understand it. Why is it, why is it the way it is? Yeah. And then you get a new pope who is purely philosophical, the new pope, asking those hard questions. Yeah. Or, or saying, like, who am I to judge? That's right. right? That, is, that is deep. Yeah. 